the 10 largest technology cemeteries in the world. Bolivia's Train Cemetery The large train cemetery, Cementerio de Trains, near Uyuni, Bolivia, is located at about 3,600 meters above sea level in the Andes. You can hardly imagine that in such a remote place you'll come across trains. And this landscape seems post-apocalyptic, deserted, desolate, as if at the end of the world. From the late 1880s to the 1940s, this town was a bustling railway junction. The mineral resources mined in the mountains were transported by train and transported to ports along the Pacific Ocean. In general, the construction of the railway network was considered by the local tribes as an invasion of their sacred land and caused many conflicts. However, in order to develop its mining industry, the Bolivian government began to use other modes of transport. Instead of being reused or scrapped, these train sets are left to their own devices. The decomposition of the metal is accelerated by the harsh, desert climate and the air full of salt. Chatillon Car Graveyard in Belgium The more beautiful it is, the sadder it is, and at times even a little scary. This is a car cemetery, but not just any cemetery. Chatillon Car Graveyard is located in Belgium, and according to old legends, during World War II, U.S. Army soldiers left their cars in the woods because they could not return them to the United States. Hiding them in the woods, their idea was to return in time and take them home, but that never happened. According to other rumors about this eerie place, the story with the American soldiers is not true. The locals stick to the version that this is just an ordinary car cemetery, which was formed during the Second World War, but there is nothing more dramatic in history. Whatever the truth about this place, it remains mixed feelings. Whether to admire this beauty unadulterated in its own way or to be indignant. Tell us what you think about this interesting place below in the comments. Davis Monthan Air Force Boneyard in Tucson Arizona Cemetery, a huge platform in the middle of the Arizona desert. It is officially known as the Davis Montan Air Force Base and the location of the Space Maintenance and Restoration Group, AMARG. This is the largest cemetery of military aircraft in the world. Its area is equivalent to an area of 1,430 football fields. Here, they found the last refuge of 4,200 planes worth about $35 billion. The aircraft repository is divided into four categories, from aircraft that are in excellent condition and can still fly in the air, to those that have every chance of becoming museum exhibits. Known as the Boneyard, AMARG has almost every type of aircraft ever used by the U.S. military after World War II. B-29s and C-74s after World War II, B-52 bombers, Cold War, F-4 fighters, Vietnam War, share space with civilian aircraft such as the Boeing 707. Arizona is ideal for such a cemetery as its dry climate helps prevent aircraft rust. Noadi Bu, the largest ship graveyard in the world. The 100,000-strong city of Nuwadi Bu is the second-largest city in Mauritania, one of the poorest countries in the world. The port, located in a huge bay, offers excellent protection for ships sailing in the country across the Atlantic Ocean. Nuwadi Bu is also one of the best fishing spots in the world. In 1980, the locals began to abandon obsolete and unnecessary ships, flooding them in the shallow waters of the bay. Soon, ships from all over the world began arriving in Nuwadi Bu to stay here forever. Local authorities took bribes and closed his eyes, and now, in the shallow waters, a huge variety of ships are rusting, from fishing trawlers to sea cruisers. One of the largest ships in Nuwadi Bu Cemetery is the United Malika, which in 2003 was surrounded by a full supply of fish. It has not been removed since. Despite measures to prevent further burials, the number of abandoned ships continues to grow, albeit at a slower pace than before. The government announced a plan in 2001 to use ships to form an artificial reef in deeper waters, but little has been done since then. The Submarine's Graveyard in Nezametnaya Cove, Kola Peninsula, Russia In the Gulf of Nezametnaya, located beyond the Arctic Circle in the far north of Russia, there is a Soviet underwater cemetery. Since the 1970s, old military submarines, many of them nuclear, have simply been left in the bay of the isolated Kola Peninsula. Soviet shipyards were apparently too busy executing orders to build new submarines to dispose of old ones. 
access to the area is prohibited without permission, so information about the cemetery remains quite limited. It is known that some of these submarines were finally sent for disposal in the 1990s due to concerns about water pollution. But Google Earth images show that at least seven submarines are still resting in the bay. The Railway Dump in Barrie In 1955, the newly nationalized British Railways announced plans to modernize obsolete vehicles. 650,000 wagons and 16,000 steam locomotives are subject to the replacement. Due to the large amount of rolling stock that was scrapped, British Railways depots failed to handle themselves and many trains were sold to private depots. Among such landfills was the Woodham Brothers Depot in Barrie, South Wales. Initially, the steam locomotives were dismantled shortly after arrival, but by the fall of 1965, Dye Woodham's owner decided to focus on making it easier to dismantle the hundreds of cars. As a result, the rusting locomotives were dumped in the backyard to an open area, where they quickly became popular with tourists in Barrie. Steam train enthusiasts soon learned that the Udham brothers were offering a chance to acquire rare locomotives for the surviving old railroads, which began to reopen across the country. Many of the models standing in Dye's yard were impossible to see elsewhere. In September of 1968, the first steam locomotive was removed from the landfill for reconstruction. In the end, 213 steam locomotives were rescued. Today, many of the landfill's steam locomotives can be found in full working order on preserved lines on the outskirts of the United Kingdom. Chernobyl Vehicle Graveyard, Ukraine After the accident at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant, radiation pollution affected not only people and buildings, but also a huge number of vehicles used for firefighting and subsequent cleaning. Since the beginning of the tragedy, most cars have been taken to huge cemeteries, the largest of which is located in Rasok. However, not all cars are buried. For example, fire engines that first arrived in the disaster area were buried deep underground. On the surface, for example, there are fire helicopters, which were the first to engage in a battle with radiation. Locals were repeatedly detained while trying to steal metal from vehicles, despite the enormous risk. Ukrainian police even arrested several people for trying to retrieve one of the MI-8 helicopters they intended to use as a cafe. The Last Motorcycle Graveyard Near the Erie Canal in Lockport, New York, there is a warehouse that has become a legend in the biker community. The warehouse once belonged to a man named Cole, who owns bicycle dealerships. By buying cheap Japanese motorcycles and stocks of dealers that ceased to exist, he amassed a huge number of rare vehicles. He even got a building for his collection, but he couldn't realize his idea. Photos of the cemetery first appeared on Flickr in April of 2010, and fans rushed to the cemetery on a motorcycle in an attempt to find rare motorcycles and spare parts for them. Falkingham Air Force Base Falkingham Air Force Base in Lincolnshire, UK, emerged in 1940 as a fictional airport to divert Luftwaffe attacks from the real RAF Spitalgate Air Base 10 kilometers to the north. In 1943, the base was transferred to the US Air Force for normal use. Douglas C-47 carriers were sent from here to land in Italy and Normandy. In 1947, the base was closed and the British Formula One team of British Racing Motors used the tracks as a test track. From 1959 to 1963, the Thor fusion missiles were stationed at the Falkingham base. Today, Falkingham is owned by Nelson M. Green and Sons Limited, which uses the old airport to store vehicles used as a source of spare parts. Caterpillar's old bulldozers, tankers, cranes, tractors, as well as former military trucks and armored vehicles built during World War II are gathering dust at the former airport. Orangemund Diamond Minecart Dump Urangemund in Namibia is a small town wholly owned by Namdeb, a joint venture between Namibia and De Beers Diamond Corporation. In the area of the city, which is located near the mouth of the Orange River, there are huge deposits of diamonds, and in fact, the whole city was built for the residents of miners. It is almost impossible to enter this area. Armed guards patrol the perimeter. Any unauthorized possession of diamonds faces up to 15 years in prison. But Orangemund is also known as the location of one of the largest car dumps in the world. Once the car drove into town, he never left it again. Apparently, this was done to prevent the illegal export of diamonds. Some of the rusting machines were built in 1920. World War II tanks used to level sand dunes are even being dumped in the cemetery.